from Los Angeles and Nashville. Get ready to go behind the scenes with Entertainment Dudes. What happens when you pair a director, Cut. a voice actor, in a world, and some of the most interesting people in entertainment? You're about to find out. Hello, hello. Hey, Jason, how you doing? Hey, Cam, I'm doing on? awesome. How I'm are you doing today, fine. sir? Hey, why'd the screen go black? I don't know. I don't know either. And now you just disappeared. Now I'm here. And now we're both here. There we go. What that happened to the end of the song, though? I didn't want to hear the end of it. Entertainment, oh, dude. Dudes. There we go. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Boy, the production values on this show just keep going through the roof, don't they? Well, when you're a filmmaker, you understand things about production value yes. and about, about perfectionism, and you always strive to, for always excellence. Always strive for that. Yes. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, even so, George. Okay, go ahead. This was pretty exciting now. This is like our 54th episode. So Cam and I have technically been wow. doing this show for over a year. And Man, so for those of we're you in our 50s. Of, we're in our 50s already. Oh my episode gosh. And growing. We're really excited because we just added uh, someone to our team who's going to be handling. Over, um, yes, Rick Yaroslav. Rick, yes, Rick. Rick He's gonna be doing, Cola. We're going to call him Ricola. <laughs> Rick Cole, he'll love that, yes. I'm sure. <laughs> so he's going to be helping us do a lot of, we're going to actually be going on location now. We're going to be mm -hmm. going and checking out some cool places and looking at new gear and maybe going to Panavision, maybe going to Hudson Spider, Aerie, checking out new stuff and meeting new people. So hopefully we'll be able to take you behind the scenes on some cool projects as well. And we're looking forward to that and excited to have him on board. And he's also going to be helping us on our social media. So oh yes. uh, we are we grow as we go. So we're really excited we about do. this. But yes. Out That's today, right. like and subscribe. Subscribe and like, I always say. And subscribe but, you know, and like. like and and if you want to catch us, if you're listening on a non-YouTube outlet and you want to catch the video show on YouTube, we're at youtube.com slash at entertainment dudes. At entertainment dudes at YouTube. Yes, and you can find us there and join us. And for all of you who are listening on podcasts, we are th so excited you're listening. And we're really excited for our guest today, Christian Howard. He's an actor. Uh, he's been in the industry for a while. And we're going to talk today about some of the projects. He and there he is into the show. Welcome <laughs> to the show, Mr. Howard. How hey are guys. you today? Good, sir. I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me on. Awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's exciting. So I was talking with uh, Cam. Uh, you and I met because uh, I was working on a project for Sear Sunglasses. And as you know, in California, especially in this industry, a lot of it's referral, who you know, who you're meeting. And I said, I need an incredibly handsome, attractive, strong, muscular, talented, powerful individual. And so Jason cast himself. So I cast myself for the project and yeah. uh, I did a great job. And thanks for your comments on the video. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, Cinnamon said uh, that we needed to talk to you. So it was great having you on that set. And I think from there, just learning about your career and about the work that you've done and everything that you've done to make yourself a viable actor worth casting in a sea of actors. That's why I was like, I've got to have Christian on here to talk about this. So tell us a little bit about how you got into acting and a little bit what, what you got started, how you got started. Yeah, right. I mean, fingers crossed we're, we're castable. But uh, yeah, it was a very fortuitous meeting with you and I um, after meeting Cinnamon on, a, on another project. But uh, I'm originally from England. I don't know if you can tell anymore, but uh, accent somewhere in between. Uh, and I was I was acting out there since I was young. Actually, um, almost went into design and hmm. sports and whatnot. And those I, I came from a very small town, so it was uh, it was a pipe dream to think you'd end up in in Hollywood. Um, but then I went to university near London, and then that sort of got me closer to entertainment. I started auditioning for things while I was at university, and sort of getting a train in and out of London. And from there, I thought, you know what, I want to I want to try and make something of this so i got into london i was doing like acting courses out there and just generally trying to trying to make my way I, I you know meet some people met some good friends um and then like you were just saying like word of mouth you know you start to know people and get a few roles and stuff uh, and then <laughs> i knew where i ultimately wanted to end up was was in the states that was sort of where my heart lay and uh, i did a project um called street fighter assassin's fist that i wrote and co-directed and produced and, and it was just a real labor of love um that sort of got me my ticket over to the states where i uh where i met you <laughs> so it's been it's been quite a journey i feel like i had um almost like two lives in acting one in england when i was finding my feet there and then when i moved here 
uh, it's, I guess, you know, if you're coming off the back of something, you, you want to hit the ground running, but, uh, I felt like I inevitably had to start all over again and meet all new people and, you know, sort of find my footing that way. Um, so yeah, I so, say, you know, I've been out in LA for about seven years. And then before that I was in London for probably the same as well. Um, yeah. just grinding away, you know? So did you notice, what have you noticed, uh, between the difference and I think there's a significant difference between acting in England and acting in the States. The have you noticed, have, besides the accent, okay. have you noticed a difference in terms of just how, how acting is approached or? Yeah, certainly. I mean, uh, you know, as, as cliche as it is, um, uh, England is a lot more geared around theater. And I mean, there's right. film industry, of course, but I mean, like, more so than it is in LA. You know, LA is not really a theater town the way like New York or London is. Um, so there's that, there's the sort of, where did you train? And, and it's not so much like, um, I, I guess the cliche, the Hollywood cliche of um, walking down the street, hey, you want to be in a movie, that sort of thing. Like, you know, the opportunities fly in a lot more over here, I have found. And I think that's when you're sort of open to them. Um, one of the big things I would say in England is people, it seem to play everything very close to their chest. Like people don't want to talk about their ideas because they're thinking, you know, they're precious and they might get stolen. But since moving out here and, and even the stuff we've worked on, Jason, where you start talking about something and then it's like, oh, I know a guy that could help you with that. And it and it sort of like breeds a bit of creativity. Here you're going to know well. the ideas are going to get stolen already. <laughs> right. So you just right. accept it. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, it's probably going to happen. You just got to have 50 or 60 ideas on the back burner when those three get stolen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly you know you just just come up with something else and inevitably even things that you think is an original idea and you start asking people like, oh yeah just like this thing and you're like okay it's, it's been done already so you know there's there's a great benefit to talking about things and getting other people mm -hmm. involved and um certainly since i moved out here you know no one's going to take a chance on you as as an unknown and it's only when you start to meet people like the way we met through through your uh, your partner cinnamon and through that it was like a good word of mouth and, and you start like working on more and more stuff so it's been yeah, it's been a hell of a journey, but I definitely prefer it over here to London. Just personally, I think the weather mm -hmm. has a lot to do with it. <laughs> yeah, my, so, my disposition. So, um, I guess there's a couple things that it, you know. Whenever you, you you're an actor, there's lots of films that are terrible ideas, and lots of them that I think are good ideas. And I find as an actor, though, it's almost like do you take whatever you get or how are, how are you selective in terms of your choices? And, and that even can lead into the kind of the moral questions. What, what are you willing to do and not do? And how do you kind of approach that in a, in a, in, in a conversation? Cause you played a challenging role in the last film, I think. And there's some places that you yourself could have said, I don't know, am I willing to go that dark for a character? You know? So I guess, tell me a little bit about uh, a little bit about that. Like, how do you approach that? Yeah, that's that's very interesting. Like you said, do do you just take every job that's going because there's it's so competitive out here. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, you tell me, Cam, if it's the same in Nashville. I mean, I know oh, a yeah. lot of actors that have gone out there that are just you know, it's it's oversaturated. Everyone's come here to do it. So so I think in that sense, yeah, if you book any job, even though it might seem like small potatoes, it's still a success. It's still like an achievement to have booked anything when. Maybe in, 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 in England, there's like 100 people going for a role. Over here, it might be 500 or 1,000. Right? You don't know. Um, but one thing I would say that definitely helped me is now that everything is self-tapes, you get to do yeah. it in the comfort of your own home or go to yeah. like a studio and be very much more relaxed about it. And I think going into the audition room, as much as you, you can sort of shine and show your personality, it's still like you might get one go at it. You know, the... the all the cards might not fall where you want them to and you right. might not get another go and you're like that was my chance and can i do it again no you know it's done whereas um the benefit and danger of doing it at home is you can do as many as you want i mean when that first started happening i was doing like 15 takes of stuff just like i, I can do a little better i'll do a little better and you do another one and then you sit down to like go through them and edit them and you're like okay i need to really be hard <laughs> on myself and say look Right. Got a good one, you know, and, and not take it with you. But yeah, certainly at home, I feel a lot more relaxed. And I think that definitely helps. And I don't even think about the competition anymore. Whereas, you know, if you're in a room with six other guys that look just like you waiting for their shot and you're just like, hmm, can get you in your head a little bit. But yeah. now sending sending a tape essentially into the void, I'm like, okay, I'm happy with the work I did and I don't need to think about it anymore. 
you know, things start coming back. It's, uh, it's a very different time we're in now. And, and I would say I prefer it this way. Um, but then, you know, there's, there's pros and cons to each. Uh, I think you can definitely book things from wherever you are, but then you come into encounter like, uh, well, are you gonna have chemistry with the other people if you've never met them in person yet? No, those kind of things. Are you gonna gel with people? I mean, I'm a cool dude, so I gel with everyone, but you know, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> what would you, what would you recommend to, uh, somebody new to doing self tapes as far as, uh, getting yourself into the character and the psyche, because you're kind of, you're kind of losing that energy when you're actually going actually in front of the casting director. And, uh, right. and also as far as, uh, beyond that, uh, just equipment and is lighting important is a good camera important. Talk about that. Mm -hmm. No, I, th I think you're, you're right on the money there, Cam. It, it's so accessible now to have a decent setup for, for self tapes, for making your own films, you know, like everyone right. can shoot something on an iPhone that looks incredible if you do it right, you know? Um, so there's really sort of no excuse anymore. I mean, a few years ago, it was like, okay, well, I've got to set all this stuff up and you know, what's now, you know, it's very affordable to get a backdrop right. and a tripod and some lights and just, you know, have a setup that's, that's decent. So there's, there's not really an excuse for it anymore. Um, and I think you can also choose who you read with and who will get the best out of you. Sometimes you go into a room and you've got a reader that's, that's done like 40 of these already. And right. it's just giving you like a completely flat read which is, you know, up to you to react off. But if you've got like, okay, I've got other actors that can help me get the best out of this audition. That to me is, is makes a huge difference. And also I, I like to play around with, you know, I, I'll put something a bit more, um, you know, depending on the character, if it's a military character, I'll, I'll sort of give a sense of that with what I wear and I've got all my stuff here. So it's very easy to do as opposed to trying to go across town and be like, how, much do I want to like dress up for this? You want to give like a hint of what you're doing, but I, I right. feel like at home, it's a very comfortable environment to do that. And, and that for me makes it a lot more like play. And I think that's why I'm so much more relaxed with it now than the pressure of, Oh my God, I got to go in and do the audition now. It right. feels Yeah. So I, I like that. I like, I like as a director, it's interesting. Cause I've, I've done both. I've had, you know, like, and I like just not sitting there for hours and hours <laughs> going through tons of people. Right. I can look real quick at your picture. And as soon yeah. as it starts, if it's like, I have, I'm like, Nope, next, next. And, and then I can find one that I, Oh, that's interesting. And then I'll do yeah. callbacks. So my thing is like, if I find two or three people that I, I really like, I think then I'll say, Hey, I want to audition them face to face. And to me, I like that better. I, I like yeah. the process. I can see like the other day I had a, a Mercedes commercial that we did. And I, I think we had maybe, I don't know, 200 people or more, yeah. 300 for a, a one role <laughs> for this thing. And, and that's just the ones that they showed me. So I remember you just have to sit there all day and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm tired. I just want to eat a snack. Yeah. I don't want to sit there and listen. And if you suck or you're not right, sometimes it's not even that you suck. It's just, you're not the right person. Like right. I know in my head who I'm thinking about and this person's a little taller than you. They got dark hair and they look a little sleazy and you're too clean. Like you don't, you look nice. That's not going to work for me. So yeah. uh, that way I could just be like swipe, swipe left, swipe left, swipe left or whatever direction it is. <laughs> so I think there's that, there's that, yeah, that component I think, that I like of that process. Well, with that as well, you know, to, to sort of add to that, um, you, you know, for, for the actors as well, it's like, there's so many things that are just out of your hands. And when you, Kind of comes to accept that like maybe this one wasn't for you rather than like what did i do wrong on this audition you know like um okay for, for example <laughs> a job i nearly lost but didn't lose but making like um a, a choice you know a, a big choice and you can sort of be um who you want to be in your audition it's not like you're in the room and they say oh don't do that or whatever like you just have to choose what you think is going to give you the best thing they may hate it they may love it. You don't know, but I feel like being separate from it, you, you can sort of make that choice confidently and not sort of second guess yourself with like, Oh, the reaction in the room wasn't so good. So there was, a, um, um, an audition I did, uh, last year for, a, for a pilot and it was all set in sort of, you know, sci-fi stuff. And it says he pulls out this blaster, right? And if I was at home, I've got all these little like prop guns, toy things going around. I could definitely use something that would serve as a blaster. But right. I was um, at home for the holidays. I was in England and I was at my mom's place. 
She doesn't have any prop guns. I know it's selfish, but anyway, very, I'm around, very selfish man. of her. I'm looking around Moms. for like what I can use in my mom's house to like. Please tell me you used a banana. Like, well, better than that. <laughs> so my mom's got this hair dryer. So I was just like, okay, well, that uh, looks like a yes. laser gun, right? <laughs> So the audition starts, I'm supposed to be like looking around the stairs and I hear this noise. And then from behind me, I pull out this, this hairdryer, right? And, and I do the whole scene, right? And then, you know, I send it off. Don't know what to expect. Anyway, I, I booked this job. I was like, wow, okay, they must have loved that hairdryer thing, right? I get on set, we're shooting the project and I'm chatting with the director, Matt. He's, he's such a good dude. And he was like, oh, I didn't. Didn't tell you initially, but now that we're in the shoot, I am. Um, he was like, I watched your audition initially, and you pulled out this hairdryer, and I just thought ridiculous. And he turned it off. He said that was that was like more than he was expecting, and he thought, okay, this guy isn't taking it seriously. And he oh, said, he wow, closed, he shut the audition, and it was only because the writer of the project was like, no, 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 you got to check it out, like give give him a chance. And he went back and watched it, and then he was like, okay, now that I'm over the hairdryer thing. I love <laughs> wow. it. Wow. Yeah. And, and for me, I was thinking like, okay, that really worked out with the hairdryer. It just goes to show you never know what their reaction is going to be. You just no. have to do what you feel is right for you, you know? And, yeah. and I guess you were like peers can, I, that's another thing. Like other actors that you, you're friends with can certainly weigh in or directors that you know that, that can just be like, okay, maybe a bit more of this, maybe a bit more of that. Like we've all got access to industry professionals who can help us out right. with these things as well. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's that's pretty spectacular. And, and uh, I think one thing I try to, you know, tell actors, students and things like this is that one of the number one things you can do for acting is just do your best at that moment and then let it go. Like because yeah. uh, I've cast roles that were I, I, their their audition was terrible, but I knew that the character was in there because I just I looked on their social media. And right. because I thought he had the right look for it. So I was like, I didn't like the audition. It was for something else that was unrelated, but I thought it was in there. Like, I'm like, nope, it's there. I can see it. So I went on his social media and there was some, just some clips of the person being themselves in front of the camera. Do it, And I was like, that's them. That's the guy right. I want to cast. So sometimes you can't, it's a specific person that I'm trying to find in my mind. Like I'm looking for this type. And sometimes the client says like, I got a call where I found a guy was great. It was the Mercedes commercial the day before the guy's like, no, no, no. We want an Asian guy. And, uh, you think it'd be, that'd be easy to find. No. Like I had to go back through about 10,000 headshots to find just the right person. We submitted him. Nope. That's not the guy. No, he needs to be a little younger, a little older. He has to look professional, but not too professional. He has, there's a very specific look that sometimes yeah. people are trying to find. And if you didn't get cast, it's not because oh, I'm terrible. No one wants to work with me. It's literally because in their mind, they had this picture of a person, maybe they saw him at a restaurant, maybe it's a friend they know, but that's the person. And yeah. so until you find that person, like, no, so you can't beat yourself up about it because, you know, I mean, you always need to get better. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, yeah. so you've already been doing stuff. What, what things do you do as an actor to make sure that, you know, you're well-rounded as a person? I know you've done some stunt coordinating, you've learned some stunts You're, you know, what, what all do you do to make sure that you are ready for a role? Yeah, I think all of that stuff is definitely important to have, like, to, um, I mean, depending on where you're aiming as well. I mean, for a while there, I was um, sort of focused on action and my background being, like, martial arts and, and stunts and stuff. So so I had, like, these physical skills um, more than maybe your, your sort of standard. I went to drama school and did, like, stage combat or something. You know, I, I had martial mm -hmm. arts training, which, um, again, doesn't always you know, relate to doing stunts for movies because it's a whole different ball game. I mean, you're, you're acting yeah. when you're doing stunt fighting, you're still showing mm -hmm. emotion, whereas a real fighter might be trying to hide that. So those are all things. Um, and even the fact that we are doing self tapes, I think the deadlines get quicker and, and you just have to keep doing it. So, so, so the repetition, like auditioning so much, I think gets you into this mode where you're you're ready for it you know i'll get something that uh, okay, drop what you're doing they need it by 11 a.m tomorrow and you're like well that's really inconsiderate but okay we've got to just do it you know so yeah i i right. think now it's it's a lot more frequent or hopefully it's a lot more frequent and even if it's not with auditions like you can be doing that with your friends with like i said the accessibility of equipment you can shoot something on an iphone just even to understand how it works like you get onto a film or 
uh, a commercial or something. And I mean, I, I have a huge interest in filmmaking and directing and everything. So I want to know how those things work. But it is surprising, like, you know, if you've never seen it before, how these things happen on set. So I think for any actor, it's good to to have that research and, and to be on a set and really be inquisitive about what everyone's job is. What does someone do and, and understand how the machine works? You know, because we're a cog in that machine. But if you're just like, well, I'm the actor and I'm just doing my bit, but you're not really paying attention to everything else. I think it can make it harder on, on everyone, but you want to be a cohesive unit. Like the actor is not necessarily more important than the grip or, or the makeup or anything like that. Like it's all got to work together. And I think that's something that um, I definitely see myself as part of this machine that is like, well, my job is to do this. Let me do my job. And if everyone's doing their job to the best of their ability, we'll make something good. You know, no one's kind of slacking or thinking my job's more important. So I don't have to worry about that. You know, it's like we're all working together. Right. Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting too, like even knowing what type of lens, a basic understanding of lenses, because if you, if you know it's certain, like a 50 millimeter is going to be closer on you, uh, you know, if they're going to be at a 24, it's a wider lens. I've got more, they're going to see my hands, my arms, right. you know, and if it's a tighter lens, I know that it's, it's like right here. And sometimes mm -hmm. the DP's going real fast. They're not telling you, they're like, okay, we're right. moving on. This is the next shot. And you don't, am I, am I in a close up? Am I, am I medium? You can right. ask that, like, you know, am I close? But sometimes even just knowing, like oh that's a 50 okay he's on my medium or he's on my close so at least yeah. it'll give you an idea uh about even your own performance and where you're going to be when you're acting you know why you're why you're acting so and um also knowing i think where knowing where your camera is too just opening up i've worked with actors who are just yeah. getting started and sometimes they'll be talking to somebody and they're they literally turn in a profile or sideways and stuff so what do you do just making sure you're <laughs> you're aware where the camera is yeah, exactly. All that stuff comes from experience as well. And like, you know, if, if your director is saying to you, like, I need you to cheat out to camera, just understanding what that means and what you have to do in your right. performance, um, uh, you know, as a professional, just to be like, well, how, how can I make this work for the situation? Uh, and to me, a lot of filmmaking is just problem solving, you know, like things are, it doesn't matter how well you plan it, something's going to change on the day. And now we've got to do this. And um, that's sort of the, the frustration and the challenge and the enjoyment of, you know, plugging those holes and being like, okay, we have to make this happen, but here's your obstacle. How do you make that happen? How do you still give the performance that's true to what you're doing? Or how do we make mm -hmm. this, this pump sell or something like that with the tools that we have at hand? And, um, that's, that's really enjoyable to like figure it out when it goes well, when it, when it doesn't go well, I don't know. Don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you still, you still learn lessons though, which is always great. I mean, I, I, I never, when something doesn't go well, I, I never really, you know, beat myself up about it. I just sit back, analyze the situation and I'm like, okay, what did I learn from this? How is this going to make me better? Right. Yeah. yeah. Cause, cause you right, could technically though. beat yourself up forever. <laughs> forever. Right. Yeah. 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 So so you, you just recently shot a film. I'm sure, you know, you could decide what detail you want to talk about it, but sometimes you have a short window to shoot a film. And yeah. I know if you could tell a little bit about at least the genre you are working on, and then how do you prep for a film when you literally have, you're shooting for 15 days, you're doing a deep drama and you won't, how long ago mm -hmm. did you find out about that project? Yeah. That's, uh, so I just did a project. It's a thriller. Um, and I play the, you know, the lead guy in it who, you know, starts off very sort of like charming and and like a winning guy and then um you sort of find out through the story he's he's a bit of a psychopath and and that was some pretty heavy elements in there so i sent off a tape uh, a little while ago it was two scenes one showing like sort of the charm and uh it's with the main girl and then mm -hmm. the other one is is him you know giving this whole monologue of why they should be together and everything it was pretty heavy stuff uh, and then like Jason was saying, it's, it was a very short shoot schedule. They were like, Hey, are you available for this? We're shooting next week. It's going to be like two and a half weeks to, to shoot this feature pretty much just on every day. Um, and there's a lot to go through. I mean, you've got a whole feature film to remember in your head, basically. Mm -hmm. and, and me and me and the girl are in, in nigh on every scene. Um, so yeah, in terms of like preparation, you, you don't have a long time to do it. And I think that you have to just make these strong choices and then with that particular one, even though it was a short schedule, the whole crew, the whole production company were just 
amazing. They were, they were great. And the director's really keeping track of what's going on. It's not like, oh, this is just whatever. We're just shooting it quickly. It's like, no, we've got this time. Let's make it as good as we can. So even then, like having a director who's really sitting at the top there, and keeping track of the characters' arcs and like, okay, at this point in the story, remember, we've got to be thinking a bit more like this, you know, and you're sort of like right. the cracks are showing and stuff. Um, and luckily on that shoot as well, and this, this was a blessing, was the, uh, all the heavier stuff was towards the end of the shoot. Because initially, so it's, uh, it's like a lifeguard movie and I'm running around in little red shorts for most of it. And uh, there's there's a scene. Um, Ladies, you know that's free. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever, come on, come all. I, I don't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yes. So, so there's a scene where me and the, and the girl get together, and it's at the swimming pool. And on day one, we're shooting at the swimming pool, and we were both thinking, like, oh my goodness, are we doing this like first day? Like we, we barely met each other, and now we're supposed to be doing this whole thing. Thankfully, not. It was all these like smaller scenes and, and our director Lane, she was, she was like, all right, I want you guys to get comfortable. I want you to get into it. I want you, you know, to get the best out of us. And that's the benefit of everyone like working together on something, especially when you don't have the time to, you know, maybe have another go at it. Like we've just got to be ready. And that comes down again to me being the, the gear in, in the machine as well. If I'm not prepared, I'm letting down everyone else on that set. If I'm not remembering my lines, that's my job, right? That's, that's all I have to do really is be the actor and anything else is like a bonus on top. So uh, if I'm not doing my job, the whole thing falls down. If anyone's not doing their job. So right. that with a very tight schedule uh, to sort of avoid the frustrations of things going wrong or running out of time, which inevitably always happens, is just having people that, that can work under that pressure and, and sort of understand the limitations of what they're doing and and to get the best out of it and I'm, I'm really proud of it i think it was like a lot of heavy stuff to do in a short amount of time um but to be given sort of the care from the crew to do that successfully hopefully successfully i guess we'll see <laughs> uh, how do you know when to take like go ahead and take a risk and something that you think maybe it's too big for this scene or whatever like do you just go straight for the like a hundred percent or do you like start at 50 and kind of ease into it or does it just depend? That's, that's interesting. Yeah. I think, um, a lot of that does depend on who you're working with, what you, how comfortable you feel as well. Like I say, in this last one, it was a thriller and there was some really intense scenes between me and, and the lead girl, Amanda. Like we, we had some like pretty heavy stuff to do where, you know, I'm brandishing this knife and, and things. And, to really get that emotion across. She's a fantastic actress, by the way. We were doing this scene where, you know, I'm sort of, I've, I've kidnapped her basically. And we we go for like the first setup and she's in floods of tears. And it almost like shook me a little bit because I was like, wow, you are giving me so much as an actor to work with. And I, and I hope mm -hmm. I'm doing the same for you. Um, and just to be able to to turn that on when the pressure's on as well. and and that was really really interesting but yeah i mean i would discuss on that one with um you know the director like i'm thinking about this or sometimes you might just try something and and she was very receptive to that sort of stuff which is you know it's a good collaboration because sometimes you will just get shut down like hey i'm thinking we can right. do this and they're just like no no we don't have time for that and you know you've got to understand to pick your battles you know is this the hill you want to die on or mm -hmm. is there mm -hmm. a better time to do that um, yeah, I wanted to do a backflip into the swimming pool and they were like health and safety. And I was like, listen, I can do it. But they were like, no. And I was like, all right, well, just to not annoy production. I'll just jump in. But I would have done a backflip. <laughs> You'll just, do, I'll just do this. And I'm like, oh, I'll save right. you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So I, I learned this. This was interesting because you brought this up. Okay. Is this the hill I'm willing to die on? So being from coming from a production side and director, you're often working with the yes men at the top that have to approve the story, the idea, whatever. And so we're working on a feature film and I knew that we wanted the, one of the characters to die. But we right. knew that they were immediately going to resist, like, his character can't die, da, 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 da. So we said, we know that they're going to fight us on this. So mm -hmm. a later part in the story, we also wrote another character dying. But we knew that this character wasn't going to die. Right. So we didn't want them to die. We had a solution. We said, all right, they survive. They're they're crippled. They have to be carried out in a lean-to. And it would create this, like, they have to work together to save this guy they didn't like. Yeah. So... So we knew that's what we were going to do already. But when we present it to the, 
to the client, we fought about the idea, this guy's got to die. He dies in this place about this kid when we already knew he wasn't going to die. And there, yeah. after we spent maybe 30, 40 minutes going fine, we're like, okay, fine. He can live. He'll survive to die. And they were like, but this guy's got to die. And they're like, they're like, well, we're like, he's got it. And they're like, okay, fine. Okay, <laughs> fine. This guy dies. So it was that idea that, you know, you're working with people right. and there's mm -hmm. a lot of creative minds together in the same space. And you yeah. yourself have your own ideas too. So how do you work with inside of a character when you've almost got guardrails? It's like you're bowling and you're like, this is the direction you're going. How, how do you deal with that? Especially if you're like, I really think he. Yeah, no, I, th I think it, it, a lot of it is about adaptability. I think for, for all of us in every, every instance, um, you know, even for directors, it's like, okay, well, this isn't going to work. Uh, again, and just back to the, um, the lifeguard movie I just did. So we were permitted to shoot on the beaches to shoot in the lifeguard towers and everything and then the day before they said oh you can't actually go inside the towers you can just shoot on the outside i don't know why that mm. was just what we were told so we have to pivot and it's like oh well, there's a whole scene that was supposed to happen in the lifeguard tower now we have to, <laughs> we have to put that somewhere else and we have to like figure out how is that still going to work when we put it like under the pier or something and Thankfully, it all did because everyone's willing to to sort of work together on it and, and make that work. And I think that's the difference. Mm. If someone's so resistant to it, where you're just you're just hitting a brick wall, it's just like, no, I'm not going to compromise on that. I don't want to do that. As opposed to, let's see how we can make this work where everyone's comfortable. Because inevitably, it doesn't matter how strong the script is on paper. You get there on the day, and you're like, this doesn't really work for me. Or like, I'm having a hard time trying to you know get this to to make sense in my head or lead to something else and, and to be able to sort of pivot. And it, you know, it is a bit about, about compromise. I mean, you, you know, the writers obviously got their ideas where they're like, I've written a brilliant bit of dialogue. And then you get there on the day and the director might say, you know, for, for the sake of getting to here, we're just going to cut that bit. And, uh, you know, and the writer might be pulling their hair out for that. Oh, I love that line. Right. But if it didn't work for the overall product um, or even for the end, not like the actors have, too much to say about it <laughs> they just be like here's what they're like and the line don't you is, mean the I'm meat like, the meat doesn't have much meat, to yeah. say <laughs> <laughs> yeah they, so how they tell me what the <laughs> How do you deal with when, you know, you're, you're becoming a character and then you, you know, you commit to it. Right. And then along comes a direction that you don't really see as a committed direction. You know, it goes completely opposite of what you've committed to. How do you deal with that? Sure. Well, I mean, thankfully, if you're working with people that, that you know, all want this unified vision, I think you can get to um, a point where where everyone's happy somewhat. But, you know, even then, I mean, mm -hmm. there's bits where I'm like, well, I don't necessarily agree with that. But if that's what, you know, you need to make the movie, then right. I understand that, too. You know, and it, it, sometimes you just have to sort of bite your tongue on it. Um, even, I mean, the, the recent news with The Witcher, you know, you know about Henry yeah. Cavill leaving that and, and it's right. like, you know, creative differences, I guess, from something that he's been doing for a couple of seasons. But if you're, if you're really feeling like this is not true to what I want to be doing, then it takes a lot, a lot of strength and bravery to like walk away from something or even to your point earlier, Jason, about turning down a job that you're like, well, it's work. Do I really want to turn it down or is it really going to benefit me? And you know, there's definitely things where I'm just like, okay, well, that's, I don't really want to cross over into that. But, you know, there's certain other things where it's a challenge and, you know, you can step up to it and, and enjoy that. I mean, this one had a lot of like swimming and underwater stuff. And I was chomping the bit to do that because it's something I've never done before on film. And I was very excited to do it. But you can also see how that could be very intimidating. And, and like, if you're not comfortable with it on mm -hmm. such a short shooting schedule, uh, you know, it can it can really do a number on you. So I think comfortability is is very important um, on sets in every department. Everyone getting the time they need to um, to do their job effectively. Entertainment news.